welcome back to Real Talk. Remember, tonight we are talking about abortion. You can join the conversation via the hashtag hash Real Talk with Tamima on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Let me know what your views are on this issue. Right now, I want to introduce my next guest, Martha Ann. She is 54 years old, and she has had five abortions. Welcome to the show, Martha. So probably your story is a bit different. Uh, I understand that you lived in India for the longest time. How many years were you in India? I was for? there for 10 years. For 10 years. Yes. And in India, abortion is legal. It's legal, yes. So tell me, how did you come to have gone through five abortions? Wow. Like Noel says, being naive. Mm. I grew up in a very cloistered family, protective. I've got brothers that would chew you up if you did anything to me. So here I am at 17. I finished my own levels. There was somebody who came and asked my dad for my hand in marriage. And the next thing he did, he, I got a ticket and my passport, which I signed on the air. I was being sent to India to go and study with my brother on boot to go and protect me there. Um, but this was now a place where I have money, I have freedom, I have, you know, nobody is controlling me. It's the first time you're out on your oh, own. Oh, out of my own. Then we are come from a place where sex was never talked about. For God's sake, even your periods were never talked about. We found out about it in school. So um, here I am, um, and then in India, girls were scarce commodities. So you know, there's, you don't need to be, you are made to feel like a princess because there was competition. Before we just settled to where we were in school, we would just have, we had the money, there was booze, boys, everything, and we're going on. In the boozing and all, I was having periods that were not getting over. So I went to a doctor, Actually, we stayed near, near like the Kenyatta Hospital of the place where you're staying, the National Hospital. So I went to a doctor there and I told, I told him my issue. And um, he checked me up and told me, number one, you're suffering from Mignon. <laughs> number two, you're having a, spon a spontaneous abortion. I didn't know what that was. So the pregnancy was terminating it's itself. Yeah. yeah. I'm somebody who's always wished for children. And if I could have children, I had plenty as I could have. Mm. So it really traumatized me. So coming out of here that I've lost a baby, they controlled it with pills. Uh, that's when I learned that pills can actually control your periods. I went back now deep into parting. Mm. And we really parted. Because, I mean, there are no rules, no nothing. Nobody tell you what time are you coming home, that kind of thing. The same guy, we were parting. And I think within six months, I was pregnant again. So pregnant from the same guy who'd made you pregnant yes, the first time? Yes, yeah. I tell him and the guy panics. Number one, let me tell you, I'm somebody who when I love you, I love you like anything. So, and what you tell me, I'll do for you. Um, so I told him, and he told me, hey, my dear, we are still young, time is going, we've got this to do, what, what, let me do thingy. See, the other doctor had, dealt, had helped me with that. I went back to him and I told him, hey, by the way, I'm pregnant. He told me I'll deal with it. So I was put under, woke up, I was okay. So the second one was by choice. You yeah, chose to abort I, um, yeah, I chose, with, uh, we, call, we, we chose with my boyfriend, but I was doing what he told me to do. We went on studying, having our fun, what, what. Then I got pregnant again. With the same guy? Same guy. So third pregnancy? Oh, yeah, third pregnancy. And now this guy, this happens, now I start getting pains in my stomach. So I went to the doctor and the doctor told me, this, your pregnancy is not okay. If you proceed with it the way it is, the baby is not sitting right and all that. I have to, we have to think otherwise it'll kill you. How so, far along were you by then? Um, most of my pregnancies were over four months because I always had intentions of having my babies. Mm. I wish I took, I, I go in for a second opinion anyway. So I did that. But when I did that, I started getting to depression. Now it's depression, sex, and, but the same guy. And because a now lot this of is booze. the third pregnancy. Yeah, it's like you're medicating yourself to forget because your mind doesn't forget some things. Mm. Your body doesn't forget some things. I got pregnant again, I think two years later. With the same guy? The same guy. So this but is this now time, your fourth pregnancy yes, with the same guy. Yeah. Now this guy, this time, he's in another state, I'm in another state. And I purpose to have this baby. That and I, in fact, I was going nowhere. I didn't want anybody to come near me so they can convince me against this thing. Then I think, um, I, actually, I think it was his friend who busted my bubble. He went and told him, and he appeared from nowhere. And then we sat, and you know, the way these guys can sweet talk us. And you know, we talk and talk and tell me, ah, these things matter. Do you know what? This, ah, within two days, I was back in hospital again. 
And I think I've gone through all the types of abortions anybody can go from the saline injection, <laughs> injection to all those. This one actually, we did it. It was, I think they gave me a saline injection and your injection and you're told to sit, stay somewhere and some, yeah, things happen and you actually give birth. And you're in a room by yourself. I'll never forget that. That color of green, I don't like it anymore. I don't, ugh, it's in the smell of hospital. But this one, because this guy came in, made me do this and went off again. Mm. I was so angry. I was, more, I was angry at him. I was angry at guys. I was angry, 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 but I didn't know where to take my anger to. So I just threw myself back into my books and doing what I was meant to do because my father told me, you're not coming home till you get a degree. Mm -hmm. And mind you, when you're doing this, you're missing some exams. People had left me behind. The, now when the people who I joined with were going back home, which is what I wanted, I was forced to go to India. I didn't want to be there. Is when I realized my dad told me, oh, coming back unless you have a degree. In that Harakati, there was a guy who was also close. I really don't know if he was preying on me and my vulnerability or mm. what, but we started going out. Both these guys are guys from in Kenya. They're, They're guys Kenyan guys. I think I just fell in love again. Somebody just gave me attention, mm. you know, far away from home. There's nobody to talk to. I got pregnant. Actually, I, I planned to get pregnant. It was not in a crisis. So this was your fifth pregnancy? Yeah, I think you're counting up. I'm not counting them, but you come on. <laughs> and um, the beauty about a big body, you can, it's very difficult to see, to show. Mm. You show by the time you're seven, Way eight later, months. Way later, second yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, six months above. So it figured a place that he started noticing. I mean, excuse me, you're, you're sharing the same bed. You feel, I, anyway, things are not, the dimensions here are not fine. So I told him. And he told me, I, he panicked, number one, because he was here sponsored to university. He was actually there on disciplinary issues as well, <laughs> you know. And he was scared of what the reaction, he tell me, Martha, if they find out this, I'm telling you, they'll stop my uh, paying for my university, all this kind of thing. And oh my God, I was so, I really, I was really feeling pity for him. So I was going to do this for him. And how far along were you by now? Now, this one was five months. So I go to the doctor and um, I tell them I'm five months. They didn't check. I mean, they did a pregnancy test. I really don't know. I should find out if pregnancy test can show if you have twins. But I went for a pregnancy test and they told me, fine, we'll deal with it. And actually, till three months, you do it. They don't have an issue. But after three months to, is it a bit, a six, you have to have a doctor's um, opinion about it. I think I was getting an injection because I could see all they did was just thing in my face, my eyes. But I could see what's going around, but they were going on what they're doing. But what I know, I went into distress. And I couldn't breathe. And I think that the theologist said, hey, there's something wrong with her. Stop, stop, stop what you're doing. And they stopped. And um, she just said, um, can you take her for an ultrasound? I went for an ultrasound and they found that they were twins. So where they thought they were aborting one child, child they were actually there were two. aborting two. So I think because they were twins, I think it, why it was such an emergency. So then um, that's when now the doctor is telling me, oh, by the way, it's not sound that you've got twins. And he's asking me, why do you want to get rid of these beautiful babies? And I told them, but, um, I just want to get rid of them. There are some three tablets that they insert, and I think they, they absorb water and they open the cervix. Mm. That's what they did, but I was still in the hospital. And I'm telling you, it was two days of horror. That one of it was pain, 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 labor. In fact, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I don't know, it's pain. Mm. And nothing was happening, nothing was moving. People were giving birth and going, no, you're in the now, you're in the maternity area right. where other people coming to give birth and all that. You're there to terminate. Me, I'm there to terminate. So I'm seeing people with their babies. You know, I was just seeing people with their babies and I was wishing it was me and all this. And mine is not happening. And I'm in pain. You walk up, you lie down, you squat. At that point, <sighs> did you regret? I was the now. Decision? Um, I'm seeing the babies, I was wishing my, I could keep mine. Mm. But I was beyond late. the you point of return. You induced to terminate. Yeah. I think one, one intern came in and um, she found me so tired because I would just walk laps around the corridors. And she checked and she says, oh, I can see the, the legs. And um, the doctor was called in and they went and they pulled the babies out. So they put the baby in some something, some uh, container. So you saw the babies? I didn't see the baby now, they were put somewhere mm -hmm. and they were, they were taken, it was something to, to a room somewhere. And I was left in this room, half covered, 
cold. I remember I was cold. I was freezing. I was stuck. And all alone until the middle of the night. Mm. So I remember, and with all my thoughts and everything. So by the time it rose up in the morning, funnily enough, the sun, you know, I was facing the window. The sun was drying, and I looked at it. And, um, and I just told God, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I did this. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And um, that's when I got the strength. I got off and went to check the babies on my phone. I looked at those babies, and um, they were there hugging each other. They were two, a boy and a girl, mm. just hugging each other. And I remember I cried. I've never cried like that in my life. You instantly regretted it. Oh, I looked at these kids and they looked like the dad corporate. They were, you know, they were babies. They were just tiny, little, small babies. They were babies, but they were tiny. Mm. And I cried. And I told God, Father, let me tell you, if you forgive me for this, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything for you. And um, I went back, but I think that cold also I got. They actually had to give me some injections because I was really freezing. Mm. But I think, thinking about it, maybe I've lost a lot of blood. So they treated me. I left hospital after three days, went back home, and um, it's something you don't talk about. Nobody would talk about it among the three of us, you know. It didn't take time. I was pregnant again. With the same guy now? With the same guy. The second guy now? The second guy. And I'm telling you, I said this one. Hi. Liwe liwalo. Nobody. Come and think between my baby and you. My baby comes first. My baby comes first. And so I you had, kept that pregnancy? I kept that pregnancy and I got a beautiful baby girl. I think she was one of the first few babies I ever born abroad. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Dottie, Dottie is beautiful. Um, she's 27 now. And this baby was a baby, the same doctor who did it, and she told me, Martha, can, I'm keeping the baby. They used to call her Anjali. I had free care in that mm -hmm. hospital. People would give me clothes. The Indians, they are, they are family. So the Indians I used to stay with, they adopted me and they helped me with the baby and all. I just had support. And um, yeah, she was there. And I remember people used to come to India. India was not a very nice place to be. Mm. They would come in summer and it was so hot. And then people say, if this baby can survive here, then we can. There are very many people who are even CEOs right now mm. who said we stayed in because this baby was here. But one thing I remember the doctor told me, mother, tell your Kenyan girls, because it was happening that abortion is not a family planning method. It's not a way to plan your family. It's not a way to sort out anything. She's my friend till today, by the way, we talk. Now, um, my mom called me back to come back and bring the baby, come back with her, bring the baby. I, I knew it was a trap. At that time, there was an intervention by Kenya Airways that any baby had abroad, Kenyan baby had abroad, they would bring it back for free so long as somebody relative met them in Kenya here. Yeah. Yeah. So we would send our babies. But I refused. I said, come, Mimi now have to Tawango. So um, that's when I did my master's. Finished my master's and did a postgraduate um, diploma in systems management. And when it was over, my ticket, the tickets were sent. That time she was below 18 months. And even in the Kenya Airways, I'm telling you, we were being treated like royalty. Mm -hmm. I think that my daughter spent her time at the cockpit. She flew all over in the cockpit. <laughs> no, they were so amazed that, oh, I mean to say there's this child. So I, I think, in fact, when I came here, people asked me, where have you got to whose child is this and all? And, you know, and I, it was like solving me. Then here I am in Kenya. My mom looks at me and tells me, my daughter, um, let me have this baby. Mom is just someone who just gathers children. She let me have this baby. You go to Nairobi, get a job. And came to Nairobi, um, got a job in a media house. Actually, I was doing freelancing in a media house as a sales executive. I was actually supposed to do the computer department, but they told me it's difficult to get into there direct, but be a freelancer, and then when a purchase comes up, you're already inside the door, you'll come out. Mm -hmm. And I remember those days, it was, pregnancy was not, a, an, it was a no-no that time, in the first two years of your career. career. Mm -hmm. So here I am, um, I'm here, and then I get another guy. Actually, this other guy came back, because he came before me, and he tried to come back, but I didn't want to get into him, so I got into a relationship with somebody else. And then in this relationship, I'm telling you, when I was a freelancer, I got myself pregnant. In fact, that one was the first time I never get morning sickness or anything. Mm. But this time I was violently sick. My body just was doing so many things. And I told him, and he, I think he panicked. I think I should have started reading things then. He panicked, and um, he says, now what do we do about this and what? 
um, yeah, you know, it's a confusion, it's a crisis for everybody, I understand. I, by the way, I understand guys when they behave like that. By the way, do you know, I had actually gotten the job. Mm -hmm. By that the, time, yeah, yeah. I'd got, I'd, and they'd taken me for, what is it called? The medic, free, free medicals. Yeah. Uh, the medicals you have to do. And in the medicals, they did, they, you know that full, that x-ray, full x-ray. They, yeah. they did an x-ray on me. So this time, my rationale was, excuse me, they done an x-ray. An x-ray can deform my fetus. You know, they say before three months, they whatever, I'll get a deformed baby and all that. That, can be, that, was, that was my rationale to not get rid of this baby. So one day I just woke up and told this guy, I'm going to have an abortion. So here I'm, I'm in a clinic in town. And again, we see the guy asks me and I tell him and he says, okay, fine, 5K. And um, again, they put in the those tablets that you're supposed to open the cervix and go home tomorrow, six o'clock, and I see Lee. So when me, I told this guy, you see Lee, get your windy cousin. So we were there, and when I was there, I went, paid the money there, and pangad laini kwa bench. My turn came in, I walked in. Um, interestingly, the, the doctor who I was there when he was looking at my records, he recognized my name and he told me, are you so-and-so sister? Mm. Oh, that made me the Lord to die. Because now you have been identified. <laughs> yes, in your secret place. You know, this time it's two people. No, no. I tell him, yeah, and he tells me, why are you doing this? And I tell him, wachana na mimi. So he did. All I know, actually, it was something, something to do with something sanctioned, because there were lots of... <laughs> anyway, that he shared rolled into the next room where we were there with some few ladies we stayed there you know to be recover kidogo you ask can you stand you can't stand go home mm -hmm. so i was driven home well, i was told i'd taken a week's leave for sick leave uh, sitting down that night because in the morning by 10 o'clock i was back in the house i couldn't stay at home i had to keep myself busy so i really fell in and i fell into my work and yeah i, was, I do my things so perfectly when i'm doing them and i was getting very good commissions then lo and behold, they are again pregnant. Boop. So this is the eighth pregnancy. Yes. The guy panics again. And I'm thinking, counting, because now I'm doing so well, I'm excelling. I've got a permanent and pensionable. I think things are running in my head. You know, you, the way you plan your life. Mm. But I remember I went back to the same place in, in um, Isli. town. Not Isili, the town office. Mm. And the same doctor was there and he looked at me and says, you're back here. And I said, yeah. And you know, sometimes jokes make things lighter, tight yeah. situations like that. And um, he said, Sawas, you know the, you know the process. Right. And I sat there. I ended up in Isili. But let me tell you, I sat there, I thought, what I know that when my name came, I was not there. You left? <laughs> yes, I walked out. You couldn't go ahead with it? Yeah, I just walked out. By the way, I'm on probation. Actually, I was, I was employed on probation, but not confirmed. And these babies who just decide to grow, I was huge, you know. And all this is happening, and everybody's telling me no, and all these stories, what? And I decided, hey, what Jenny na mimi? After all, nobody looks after me and my parents. You know that my parents are, my dad is in Mombasa, my mom is in Gishagi. And your to anybody. parents never knew about the I number of abortions? I think they've come to know about it, all these stories when I talk about it, because I talk about it a lot. Yeah. Um, so what happens is, I'd, I had this baby, I had my son, but I realized I hadn't been confirmed. Everybody else I did the thing was confirmed. When I asked that, they told me, we are not confirming you. Actually, that's how I knew I was pregnant now. We are not confirming you because you're pregnant. Mm. So um, I, I would think, and I just decided Kichongum, I'm having this baby of mine. So I had my son, he's 21 right now. Thanks for tuning in tonight. As always, we value your feedback, views, and comments. You can reach out to us via social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Well, tonight's topic continues tomorrow. Please join us as we mount an intervention to save a young woman in crisis. See you tomorrow on Real Talk. Life is sacred. This is Real Talk. My name is Virginia, hanging out together with Tamima right here. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Ah, uh, sorry. Hello, everybody. This is Angie Chege, and we're having real talk with Tamima. Today, we're going to talk about abortion. It has been a main thing uh, in our country right now. So, tune in kindly. Welcome. Hello, 
I am Tamima, the host of Real Talk with Tamima, and I would like to invite you to be part of my audience or a guest on the show. All you have to do, if you have a story that is very personal, very powerful, and you want to inspire other people, please reach out to the show via the email address on your screen or the number as well.